Hello and welcome to session two on our synthesizer course here at the recording workshop and what we're going to talk about now are the filters and again working with the MS-20 um, the MS-20 is called an MS-20 because it's got two oscillators you've got VCO1 here on the left and then VCO2 here on the right which we talked about at the last session we also have two filters. You'll see that we've got a high pass filter and a low pass filter. And underneath both filter controls, we have a resonance control, which in this case is called peak. Uh, some companies do call them slightly different names. So the most common term is resonance, but in this case, they call it peak, which in a very, very simple way amplifies the cutoff frequency of the filter. So this one is for the high pass filter and this one here is for the low pass filter. The low pass filter allows the low frequencies to pass through. Therefore it cuts out the higher frequencies which makes the sound more muffled. Um, but uh, it also is very useful for creating a bass sound. So we start with a sawtooth waveform. I'm going to have a sawtooth on both oscillators. Uh, oscillator 2 and oscillator 1 and here we have our note you can hear it's quite grainy quite bright as I turn the filter down the sound gets more and more muffled and it also gets quieter quite simply because there's literally less sound we're filtering off the higher harmonics and this is creating a waveform that's getting closer to a, a sine wave in fact now that seems to be very quiet but it's it is also much less bright okay so if I open the low pass filter the sound gets brighter or it allows more and more of the higher harmonics to come through and a sawtooth includes all the harmonics. On the high pass filter, that's used to make a sound thinner. So it's the opposite in a way to the low pass filter. That filters out the low frequencies, so it lets the high frequencies pass through. Therefore it's called a high pass filter. So this is very good if you want to get a low pitch sound which has no bass to it. And it gets thinner and thinner, and similarly to the low pass filter, it gets quieter and quieter. And if we use this on a high frequency or a high pitch sound, there's probably going to be less, less effect. Until we get to the very top end where the filter is completely closed. So you tend to get more effect with filters if you're using low pitch notes. So synthesizers tend to be used quite a lot for basses of notes which are in the bass area, say two or, two or three octaves below middle C. Okay, now I want to demonstrate the resonance control, which amplifies, this is a very simplified way of looking at it, but it helps to understand, it amplifies the cutoff frequency. The cutoff frequency is the frequency at which the filter starts to take effect. So, at the moment, the low pass filter is open, you can see. I'm going to turn a peak control up to about six, not all the way, because otherwise it feeds back and produces a rather whistling sound like you get on shortwave radio. Closing the filter now. And you'll notice the cutoff frequency is much more obvious and you're getting that typical acidy sound. Let's turn the resonance up a little bit more. you're hearing are the harmonics of this particular sound and we've got a, nearly a sine wave down here it's very subsonic my ears are kind of vibrating at the moment obviously you can't hear it but 
It's more of a feeling, actually, than a... You'll notice how grainy that sound is, and the reason it's grainy is because we're using a very low pitch, and so we can actually start picking out the individual cycles. So at the moment I've got 32 feet and 16 feet, and if I turn VCO2 down, so we've just got VCO1 on the 32 feet setting, you'll hear the graining effect much more noticeably. So that's a result of using a sawtooth wave, which is a very sharp sound, quite a bright sound, and using a very low pitch at the same time. Okay, so I've opened the filter up on the high on the low pass filter. Okay, and I'm going to bring up VCO2, just makes it a little bit stronger. And I want to demonstrate this time the high pass filter using the resonance control. So I turn the resonance about six and a half, and then I'm going to close the filter. And then turn the resonance down. So that's an example of using a high pass filter which with added resonance tends to emphasize the cutoff frequency. Now, there is a third fi filter which is actually a combination of a high pass and the low pass together, which is what's known as a band pass. So you can only really get this kind of control on an analog synthesizer like the MS-20. There are not a lot of synthesizers on the market that give you both a high pass and a low pass filter which you can use independently at the same time. Right, so I'm going to turn the resonance up here, and I'm going to turn up the whole time, so I don't have to keep my finger on the keyboard all the time, and I'm going to demonstrate what a bandpass filter sounds like. It's not too dramatically different to a low-pass filter, but it is different. <laughs> So that's the bandpass filter sweeping, but I can vary the bandwidth manually, and I can have it as narrow whoop, as I like, or as wide as I like. With digital synthesizers, they give you a lot of presets of these controls, but they're not continuously variable as we can have on an MS-20, an analog, true analog synthesizer like the MS-20. And that's the only way you're going to be able to get this level of control over the sound. I've demonstrated these filters using a sawtooth wave because it has the richest comp uh, composition of harmonics, but you can simply use it also on other kind of filter, sorry, waveforms such as a square wave. So I'm going to use a square wave here. And low pass filter. The high pass filter. finally disappears. Right, so that ends this particular session on filters. We do go into this in a lot more detail. There are other filters as well on our synthesizer course, which is part of the TRW music production course. <laughs>